everyone! Welcome to the Jada in Stitches show. We've been doing some spring cleaning around here, getting into the closets, and that has reunited us with our wire hanger collection. You know, I've always loved the look of covered wire hangers, but I'd never had a chance to try my own hand at it. So we thought we would make that this week's project. We came up with a really neat way to completely enclose a wire hanger in some nice classic shell stitch crochet. So without further ado, let's grab our hooks, grab our clothes hangers, grab some yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and let's stitch up a clothes hanger cover together. For our crocheted covered wire clothes hangers, you're going to want around 70 yards of a size 4 medium weight yarn. I'm using a cotton acrylic blend, but you can use any fiber you like, so long as you choose a yarn that has a nice tight spin or weave to it. You don't want a yarn that's fluffy or tends to have long fibrous tufts come out of it very easily. Obviously, you don't want your hanger to shed on your clothes. So about 70 yards of a nice smooth yarn. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, the hook we're using is a 5.0 millimeter, also known as an H or an 8 in the US, possibly a 6 if you have old hooks from the UK, and you're going to want a wire clothes hanger. This one is around 16 inches wide or 40 centimeters by about 5 inches deep or 12 centimeters, and that's from the flat bit at the bottom of the hook to the bottom of the wire hanger itself. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. Our clothes hanger cover is made in two parts, side one and side two. Side two is built onto side one, we'll explain that in the tutorial, but both sides are made exactly the same way. So you're going to repeat side one's instructions for side two, and it's going to look just like this when we've got the whole thing assembled. We're going to start with our yarn. We aren't going to require the use of our hanger until we have the whole crocheted thing pretty much put together. We're going to begin with a slip knot, and we're going to chain six. Join with a slip stitch to the first chain. We're going to make a ring, and this is what we're going to build side one and side two out of. So let's begin with side number one. Row one, we begin with a chain three. The chain three at the beginning of every single row in this entire pattern counts as a double crochet. We're going to work four more double crochets into the ring. So that's four double crochets plus the chain three, that equals five double crochets, and that is the end of row one. Chain three and turn. Remember the chain three counts as a double crochet for every single row. Into that same stitch that we just chained three out of, you're going to work two double crochets, and this will be our first shell. We are using the traditional shell stitch for the rest of this pattern. So three double crochet equals one shell and we chain one in between all of our shells. Skip a stitch, find the next stitch, it will be the very middle, work three double crochets into it, so that's three double crochets, that's our second shell, chain one, that's our spacer, Skip a stitch, find the top of the chain three, which remember counts as a double crochet, and work three double crochets, or a shell, into the top of that chain three. Those are the tops of the turning chains. You're going to treat it like a stitch because it does count as a double crochet. So the last shell, or the last three double crochet of every single row is always worked into the top of that chain three. At the end of row two, you'll have three shells and two chain one spaces in between. To begin row three, we're going to chain three. Turn our work, remember that chain three always counts as a double crochet, and from here on out, every row is structured the same way. You begin with a chain three, 
Finish off the first shell by working two more double crochet into that same stitch that the chain three comes out of. So there's your first shell worked into the same space as that chain three. Chain one, then you start to look for the chain one spaces. So nice and easy, you're looking for a space just like you were making a granny square. Three double crochet into the chain one space. Don't forget to chain one. Find the next chain one space. And every row is going to increase by one shell and every row is going to increase by one chain one space. So it's nice and easy to keep track of. There's a shell, chain one. And then the last shell of every row is always built into the top of the chain three or the turning chains that finished off or began, I should say, the row before. So you find the top of the chain three and work your last shell into it. Three double crochet. That's the end of row three. You'll have four shells and three chain one spaces. Every row from here on out is exactly the same. You begin with a chain three, finish off that first shell in the same stitch as the chain three, so that's two double crochet. Don't forget to chain one in between your shells, so there's your shell, chain one. Look for the chain one spaces, nice and easy peasy. Make sure you put one shell or three double crochet and a chain one into every single chain one space across. The chain one that you tack on to the end of your little shell, here it is, becomes the chain one space for the next row. You're going to repeat this pattern until you get to row 11. And at the end of row 11, you'll have 12 shells and 11 chain one spaces. Don't forget that you finish every single row with three double crochet or your final shell in the top of the chain three. So you chain your last one, find the top of the chain three. I like to spin it around so I can see it or sometimes I just find the top and stick my hook through it. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Work three double crochet into it and that's the last shell in your row. The row that you have just finished will always be easy to ascertain. You can easily count. So here's row one, row two, row three, row four. Also, row four, you'll have four chain one spaces and five shells. So whatever row you finish, you'll have one extra shell. Row four has five shells. Row five has six shells. Row seven has eight shells and so on. But you always have the exact same number of chain one spaces as the row you're on. That's row four. There are four chain one spaces. That's all you need to do. I will see you at the end of row 11. At the end of row 11, you should have 12 shells and 11 chain one spaces in between. And if we just sort of compare it to the wire hanger we're covering, there should be a little bit of gapping around it because we will be stretching it to fit around the entire frame. And this is a pretty stretchy fabric and that's the whole idea. That's how you get this sort of nice stretched sort of look going. Once you've finished row 11, you can fasten off. I'm just gonna put my hook back in here. And take a moment to weave in your little tails. Uh, this just kind of helps keep things neat and tidy as we go. And I'm just going to weave that tail in underneath some of the stitches along the bottom of my last row. There we go. And then double back through those same stitches just to make sure that it doesn't want to come undone. There we go. And if you've got that little one up at the top, weave that one in two and we'll get to side two. Here we go with side two. Side two is exactly the same as side one. We are going to start with a slip knot, but rather than begin with a chain and a ring, 
we've already got our ring established, we are going to build it into the same ring that we built row one off of. So we start immediately with row one of side one. So we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch right through that ring, chain three, and finish row one with four more double crochets. Remember the chain three counts as a double crochet, so at the end of row one we will have five double crochet stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five double crochets. That includes the chain three. That's row one complete. We chain three, turn our work, the chain three counts, it's double crochet. Let's do row two together. Two more double crochet into the same stitch as the chain three. Chain one, that's our little spacer. Skip a stitch, find the middle stitch. Work three double crochet into the middle stitch. Don't forget to chain one. And every row ends with a shell in the top of that chain three. So we find the top of the chain three, work three double crochet into it, and that is row two. So row one, row two, you should have two chain one spaces and three shells at the end of row two, and every single row is exactly the same here on out. Row three to row 11, chain three turn, two more double crochet in the same stitch as the chain three. Don't forget to chain one, and now you're only looking for the chain one spaces, and since you just finished side one, this will be very familiar. Three double crochet, chain one in each chain one space across. Every single row will increase by one full shell and one chain one space. And every row ends with a shell in the top of the chain three that began the previous row. There we go. So there's row one, row two, and row three. I'm going to turn you loose. Row four through eleven is exactly the same. Begin with a chain three, two double crochet in the same stitch, chain one, shell chain one in each of those spaces, and end the row with three double crochet in the top of the turning chain, just like side one. And I'll see you at the end of row eleven. At the end of row 11 of side 2, you should now have something that looks a little bit like a skinny little hourglass. We are not fastening off. We are just going to continue from here as we seam the whole thing together. So here we go. We're going to chain one. And we're going to pull up on our loop and get our hook out of the way. We're going to take our hanger and you're going to take that chain six ring in the center and slip it over top of the hook part of your hanger so that your two sides hang on either side of your hanger. Now this is the tricky part. We are going to be crocheting around the hanger as we seam together these two pieces. So a lot of the little, um, the next little while is going to be spent repositioning the hanger, repositioning it probably on your workspace or your lap so that you can get a comfortable uh, hold of it and work some stitches. It's not super easy, so I just want you to be forewarned and just relax. We're not doing anything super complicated in the stitch department, we're just single crocheting, but this is a little bit uh, tricky only because of the fact that we're working over a solid wire hanger. But you will get used to it, you will get the hang of it, and you're going to love the outcome, I promise. I'm going to reposition the camera here just so we can get a closer look at what I'm doing. We are going to pair up the two bottom edges of our wide triangles. And the first thing we're going to do is take our hook and slip it through the first stitch of the first shell. So we're going to just focus on one shell and one chain one space at a time. This way we won't end up skipping any stitches. 
Then you're going to slip your hook through the next corresponding stitch, which is actually the top of a chain three. So don't confuse that. Make sure you get the top of the chain three. And this is where we work around the hanger. Your hook goes under the hanger and your yarn stays on top of the hanger. You grab the yarn with your hook so that the yarn is over top of the hanger, pull up a loop and single crochet. Now you're going to have to hold on to the hanger and your work as you go. So you are going to find it's, it helps to kind of reposition things as you work. If you have to stop and tighten up your yarn for each stitch, do that. There's no rush here. You want to make sure you get a nice even edging all the way around. Next, take your hook, go back through the next set of stitches, making sure that it's the second of each of those, the second stitch of each shell. Make sure your hook is under the wire and your yarn is over top of the wire. Pick up a loop and single crochet. Now, if some of your stitches end up looking a little, a little loose, that's okay. Just take a moment to sort of tug on your yarn and wiggle your hook back and forth and that will help sort of tighten things up a little bit. Next, pick up the next set of stitches. So if you have to do them one at a time, there's one, there's number two. Make sure your hook is underneath the wire. Tighten up on that yarn. Make sure your yarn is over the wire pick up a loop and single crochet. And like I said, you're going to spend a lot of time repositioning the wire and working over top of it. Now don't worry about it trying to fill in the space just yet because we're just going to concern ourselves with stitching together the bottom seam first and then we're going to work our way up the side and down the other side. And it will all eventually kind of pull itself into shape so you don't have to worry about trying to shape it as you go. Right now, you just want to concern yourself with seaming. The next one is easy. It's the two chain one spaces. So hook goes under the wire through the chain one spaces. Tighten up on the yarn. The yarn goes over top of the wire. Pick up a loop and single crochet. And you might have to sort of fiddle a bit with how you hold your hook, how you pull up your loops. This is the longest part of this little project. But you just want to take your time Find the next set of stitches. That'll be the first stitch of the next two shells. Make sure that you don't slip out. Hook goes under the wire, yarn goes over the wire, and single crochet. And just to keep control, I'm finding I have to kind of pull it through one loop at a time as opposed to two like I normally do. All right, I'm gonna let you guys work the way at that. You're gonna single crochet through each set of stitches and chain one spaces all the way across. Remember to keep the, the hook going through the sets of stitches under the wire and the yarn over top of the wire. Feel free to fiddle around with the hold. Uh, you might want to work against your lap, whatever makes it the easiest. And you are going to just continually shuffle things around. So don't worry if you have to keep kind of moving things around. It should be able to move fairly freely across your wire hanger, but of course, we're seaming it together. You can see it's seamed together at the bottom. And we're working over top of that wire so that it pulls itself into position eventually. Once you've single crocheted both edges together, working over top of the wire, you should have something that looks like this. And if you pull up on your hook, and you stretch the whole thing apart, it will stretch to both sides. So it'll be a little on the tight side, but it's going to stretch. When you get to the end, your last stitch or single crochet should be through the pair of last stitches of the shell. It'll be the top of a chain three and a regular stitch. And you can just work two more single crochet into that pair. That'll just strengthen the little corner a little bit. So a couple more single crochets into the same place. And now we're gonna work our way up the side. So again, you can just pull the whole thing over so that it's a little easier to work on. 
and we're going to focus on side stitches. So we're not going to be splitting yarn, we're going to be looking for the actual stitches that were the edge of each shell. So there's that stitch and here's this stitch. And it's the same thing, you're going to put your hook through the space between stitches so that you get both those stitches up on top of your hook. The hook and the stitches stay under the wire and your yarn goes over top of the wire. And into that space of those two stitches, you're going to work three single crochet. So there's 11 rows, you're going to work three single crochet into each set of stitches all the way up. So there's 11, you're going to do this 11 times. So find the next set, so there's a stitch and there's the stitch on the other side. So hook through both, hook is under the wire, yarn is over the wire. Tighten up a little bit on that yarn. I find I have to kind of maneuver my yarn here and there just to make sure that I'm keeping everything in the right place. And then three single crochet worked over top of that wire. And that's the first two sets done. And it's going to look like that. Nice and stretchy, you can see we're already turning a nice little corner here. And you're going to work all the way up that side, working through each set of stitches, and you're going right through the space. You're not trying to bisect the stitch. You want this to be nice and sturdy, so slip your hook right through the spaces around those stitches and work three single crochet over top of the wire in each set. I've now worked three single crochet through each set of the sides of double crochet. So I'm working right around those stitches up all 11 rows. So we've got all those single crochets and little sets of three worked over top of the wire. So everything is nice and seamed up. The last three I worked are across the two side or around the single or the double crochets, I should say, on either side of row one. And we're right up against the the neck of our clothes hanger. So now we're just going to shimmy across. So you're just going to slip your hook right through and make a nice loose slip stitch. And then out the other side, slip stitch again. So you're just making a real light slip stitch across the top, nothing fancy. And now this is the part where it stretches itself into shape. So this is where you might find yourself kind of tugging on your yarn or your work a little bit and that's all right. You're going to continue to work through sets of stitches. So I'm going to slip my hook through that stitch and through this stitch, making sure that my hook is always under the wire and my yarn is over top of the wire and three single crochet and this is just kind of almost working a little bit sideways. So it's a bit awkward up at the top. It gets a little bit easier as we go down the side. So I can see where I'm slipping my hook through. There we go. So there's three single crochet worked through those two edge stitches up there. And that's the toughest part. And now we're working down the side. So feel free to pull and stretch your work as necessary. If you have to identify those two stitches one at a time. So there's one, there's two, hook is under the wire, tighten up yarn. And then it helps to brace your work against your workspace or on your lap. And work three single crochet through the same place. So I just like to hold the whole thing right around it, making sure my hook is under the wire and single crochet. It does get a little easier. And you're just going to repeat what you did over here on the other side. I've single crocheted through each set of stitches all the way down the side. We're all nicely seamed up. 
And now we're to the other bottom corner. As you can see, it has pulled itself into shape. I'm just going to try and get this whole thing in the frame here. It's a little awkward. I want to work three more single crochets into the same place that I started with, just to turn this corner. Now you can put these single crochets anywhere you want. Just make sure it's going through both sides of your little project. So it can be in that first set of stitches, it can be through that same series of stitches that you finished with. Just remember, like everything else, hook under the wire, yarn over the wire, work those last three single crochet, and then tug the whole thing around to join with a whole slip stitch to that first single crochet. Then fasten off, pat yourself on the back because that was amazing. Working around something solid is not easy. And you can just sort of tug the whole thing into a better shape if it hasn't fully tugged itself in already. And now you've got a nice soft two-sided hanger. Let's weave in that tail now. I'm going to thread up my tail and I'm going to weave it through these stitches, these little single crochets that run right along the edge of the wire. So I'll get a few in there. There we go. And then double back through the same ones. I really love these wool needles. They make this kind of work a lot easier. And if you've got any yarn left over, you can either trim it or just weave it in through a few more stitches. I think that's what I'm going to do. There we go. Trim that a little bit. And we're all done. Nice, neat corners. We've worked around the wire so that the wire will not poke through and poke at our fabric of our clothing. And of course now you have a nice non-slip edge. And we've got little spaces in between so if you wanted to hang things, little tiny socks or or uh, stockings or whatever it is you kind of need a little space to kind of hang things in, maybe little belts, you've got that little option too. I really like this. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. Now our clothing won't want to slip off the side. So this is really nice for those little silk blouses or maybe those pretty little um, vests or something you might have in the closet. And best of all, it's got a little bit more softness on the corners, so it's not going to poke into things quite as much as it used to. That, and it's pretty. I might even try making some in stripes. We'll see where this goes. We hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week, and we'll see you again soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.